On the programme yesterday, we spoke to a representative from Boots, the uh, pharmacy chain, which has decided from tomorrow to offer the morning after contraceptive pill on an over-the-counter basis. You won't need a prescription from your GP to actually get access to this particular medication. Uh, the majority of the comments coming in yesterday from listeners were overwhelmingly positive towards this particular action, but it seems that some doctors are not particularly happy that it is the right thing to do on medical grounds, they say. We'll be hearing from one of those doctors in a second. Uh, but Darrell Lachlan is with us as well, a pharmacist from Medwell Pharmacy in Tum in County Galway, also president of the Irish Pharmacy Union. Hello to you, Darrell. Hi, Matt. Do you think will many other pharmacists now follow the example of Boots and decide to offer a similar service? Well, what Boots have done is they've introduced a protocol which is signed off by their own medical director and this is a, a registered medical practitioner who works for them and under this protocol their pharmacists who have all been trained to operate it will be able to administer and supply the morning after pill or the emergency contraception and that protocol wouldn't apply to any pharmacist who doesn't work for Boots at this stage but I would anticipate certainly that other pharmacists will be in a position to offer very very similar services uh, in time as they're I mean, under similar protocols but not necessarily the Boots protocol. Okay well, and who would operate those protocols particularly for independent pharmacists? Well, actually, in the Irish Pharmacy Union, it's something that we have been looking at as well, and we're not as far advanced as Boots in this, but we have been advocating for a long time that the role of a pharmacist should be expanded and that legally pharmacists should be able to p supply medications which don't require prescriptions in other jurisdictions but do require prescription here when it's obviously quite safe for them to be supplied by pharmacists who are fully trained and qualified in this anyway um, and because we haven't seen any shift in the legislation and we haven't seen any real move to loosen up the scheduling of medicines in Ireland where they're still scheduled very conservatively that's why we ourselves are also going to be looking at these protocols similar to what Boots has put in place. I'll come back to you in one second, Derek, there's a couple of things arising out of that, but I want to bring in Dr. Ronan Boland, who's a GP, he's also a chairman of the Irish Medical Organisation. Hello to you, Ronan. Uh, how you doing, Matt? Now, what's your response to this news by Boots? Uh, well, I, I, th I think it's fair to say that, that, that uh, my colleagues and I would have, would have significant concerns about uh, about this, this particular initiative, but also a par in terms of the, the, the general tendency to, uh, as we would see it, to, to fragment a lot of the services that that are that would currently be provided uh, in a general practice setting. I think it's also fair to point out because uh, I think I just I didn't hear all of of, uh, of Dara's piece there because I was just as a patient just literally just went out the door, but but. Uh, we've always had uh, in, in, in trying the legislation a, a very clear separation of uh, of prescribing and dispensing, which which I, I think uh, we would view as being in the best interests of the consumer and the patient. In other words, that that, uh, that, that my responsibility extends to d deciding what the the best uh, um, and appropriate treatment is for the patient. But I have no no particular vested interest one way or the other in in uh, in the, the the actual product that's prescribed to the patient. But likewise, why would you not actually set out? What the product is going to be in the prescription, you're right. Yes, but what I'm, but what I'm saying is I don't, I don't have any, I, I wouldn't stand to gain in any, in, in any way, shape or form from, from, uh, from what decision I make. So my decision is made purely on the basis of, of, of clinical need for the patient. Sorry, what well, might you not have a, 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 a relationship with a drug supplier who might have persuaded you to prescribe one particular drug over another? No. How are you making the prescription? No, absolutely not. And in fact, there, there, are, there are very clear guidelines which are actually becoming, which are becoming tighter all the time in, in relation to uh, in relation to such matters. And it's for the, for the same reason, just, just if you flip the coin a little bit, it's for the same reason that doctors uh, in, in this country and other jurisdictions are not allowed to, uh, to operate pharmacies or to actually prescribe or to, or to dispense and sell medications to patients because it's in the patient's interest that, that there's a clear separation that, uh, that I as a doctor decide in the appropriate uh, treatment. But in, that's not necessarily in, the case in other countries. Even in Northern Ireland, if you're in the six counties of the north, you can go and buy the morning after pill without needing a GP prescription. Yes, that, that is true. And, and it, it's, it, it's not a black or white issue. The other thing I'd say in relation to the UK is, 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 is that we have very different jurisdictions, particularly if you, if you want to look at the UK. The UK has had a very serious problem with, with uh, a shortage of, of general practitioners 
open waiting list of up to two weeks for people to see uh, to see a, a general practitioner for many years and successive governments in the UK have spent uh, fortunes trying to attract additional general practitioners we don't we don't have that problem in this country I'm in my surgery until half five this evening I'll be starting a shift myself in South Dock and our cooperative uh, in the, in Cork City at six o'clock and we have continuity of service so if we, if, if, a, if a woman uh, needs emergency contraception she can access that uh, from myself or any of my colleagues not just during normal working hours but throughout the weekend and at night time and I have no doubt that tonight as in, in every other night um, amongst all the other uh, patients who I'll treat tonight I'll probably have one or two patients who will have need of and will receive prescriptions for emergency contraception. But a lot of listeners last night texted in and they're doing so again this evening saying that this is just GPs trying to protect their source of income that you want the fee for people visiting you before they actually get the prescription. No I wouldn't agree with that I mean I, what I would say to you is that I, I actually had a, I look at my own practice over the last couple of days because I've done a few other interviews in relation to this, uh, uh, emergency contraception forms a, but a tiny part of, of uh, the huge variety of services that, that we provide. Well, my, my concern is not in relation to that at all. In fact, it's in relation to the the the, the potential fragmentation, not just in relation to to morning after pill, but if you have a plethora of providers of of uh, pr- of certain primary care services that are traditionally provided in the general practice setting, uh, you have nobody who has uh, who has what we currently have, and I think is a very good system where uh, you have general practitioners who, who maintain overall responsibility for the care of the patient who are the only people who actually hold a record of people's uh, of all people's ongoing medical attendances and they're in a position to, to advise having a regard to the patient as a whole not just to, uh, having regard to a specific problem and what I would say Matt as well is that, is that uh, uh, I do prescribe uh, emergency contraception on a regular basis both in my own practice and out of ours in the co-op and well, in, I would say at least in a significant minority if not in the majority cases it, it ends up not being a straightforward uh, prescription for a morning after pill. There are issues around ongoing contraceptive needs. There are issues around sexual health, around uh, 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 risky sexual behaviour and so on. And in many cases even if uh, if women avail of a prescription for uh, more emergency contraception in the pharmacy, they may well end up needing to come back to see me anyway. Uh, what I would also say is, is that in a significant number of cases I won't end up prescribing the morning after pill because having taken the careful history uh, and not being the person who's going to be selling the product to the patient, I will advise the patient that they don't need the morning after pill in the first place. So it's not as straightforward as, as it might at first appear in terms of, I mean, it appears superficially attractive that it's a very good idea, uh, but it's not without a significant downside. Dara Lachlan, how much does a morning after pill cost somebody who has a prescription going in to buy it? Um, well, I know in my pharmacy it's approximately 15 euros. Indeed, because I got a tweet from Lisa in Dublin who pointed out when Booth's charging 45 euro, they're effectively charging 30 euro for a day on top of the cost of the pill for allowing you to bypass the doctor. So this is just an economic argument, isn't it? This is just Booth's looking to undercut the doctors. Well, Booth are entitled to charge a consultation fee because contrary to the impression that some people might take from Dr. Boland's soliloquy, um, Booth's, um, my understanding is, have a very, very strict protocol in place where they do take a, a detailed history from the patient as appropriate and they are going to establish, for example, whether the patient really needs the morning after pill or not before they supply it. And I don't for a moment believe any pharmacist will be supplying a morning after pill to somebody who doesn't need it simply in an effort to get the price of the tablet from them. I think that's a, a fallacious argument. Um, and, I mean, there's more to this agenda, really, than just the morning after pill. What we are seeing in Ireland now and what has been seen in other countries all across the EU and in the United States is a broadening of the role of pharmacists into more of the primary care area, into minor ailments and into disease management and so on. And it's about providing services to patients in an accessible format, safe services in pharmacies, which are all regulated to extremely high standards. The regulation of pharmacy in Ireland is probably among the tightest in the world. We have a very high quality or high standard of regulation under the Pharmaceutical Society, and they are inspecting pharmacies on an ongoing basis. So there are no patient safety worries here. And even the opposition spokesman on health in the Oireachtas has said that what he would like to see is GPs being in a position to provide more services to their patients, which patients currently need to go to hospital to have. And the only way that can happen is if there's capacity freed up a general practice and by pharmacy picking up some of the less complex treatments, such as the morning after.
pressure pill, minor eye infections, the other things... Oh, sorry, I are indeed, as a number of listeners are saying, maybe even if the contraceptives could be actually district given without having to go back to a GP to have them renewed, although there are also issues in relation to blood pressure there. I'm going to leave it there, Dara Lachlan from the Irish Pharmacy Union and Dr Ronan Boland of the Irish Medical Organisation, because we have